wants the centrepiece of MG Rover's future promise and its stand at the 2002 Geneva Motor Show, this car is now largely forgotten. Meant to show the forward thinking and direction of the Rover name, essentially creating a new category of passenger car, the TCV was meant to show the world what the future of Rover would be. In this video, of course, we're going to be talking about the Rover Tora concept vehicle. And now my friends, I must prompt you to subscribe. So remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment and share if you enjoyed it and drop me a comment below of what you think about the Rover TCV and any other cars that you'd like me to cover. Um, it's not obviously just Rovers and um, we could cover whatever you guys like. But without further delay, let's get into the story of the TCV, which has been quite an elusive character. Since the unveiling of the CCV or Coupe concept vehicle in 1986, there hadn't been another concept car from Rover bearing the Rover name, with MG receiving the most attention. So the TCV was a significant event. The brief for this car was simple yet quite complex. Formed the basis of the Rover 45's replacement, which had been based on the Honda Civic since 1995, first introduced with the Rover 400 HHR platform. This design was a departure from the borrowed platforms, introducing a fully in-house design, resulting in the TCV being designed by MG Rover's design team, headed by Peter Stevens in the Gaiden studio, with many of the R30's design team moving over to the project. This car was so widely anticipated, and the hype around it was being built up so greatly in such a way that supposedly an MG Rover employee met with the editor of Autocar for lunch and let this photo slip out of his bag as he left. Of course, this is part of the RD X60 project. The complexity of this design was an understatement, practically inventing a new category at the time, the lifestyle estate. Essentially, a highly adaptable estate car with a higher ride height this would essentially be known today as a crossover, but at the time was quite difficult to categorise. And let me know if you would have bought one, by the way, because I certainly would have. I think it's an incredibly handsome beast. The TCV's innovative features didn't end there. It was designed to be an adaptable car with a versatile interior, moulding to each use case, each lifestyle demand. Rover, of course, made a point of this by sticking a washing machine in the back, stood upright, no less. The back seats went with a modular concept. It could incorporate a desk, a child seat, an entertainment centre, so a DVD player at the time, and it could also be swapped for a fridge, which is quite interesting. If you're feeling, obviously, a tad traditional like me, you could just swap it with the standard middle seat. The boot floor was also supposedly configurable as well. One of the most odd things they used to demonstrate the boot size was this very oddly bright red chair in the concept photos. The way they achieved this extraordinary rear load taking ability was the ability to lower the rear floor and lower the, the top portion of the rear bumper to allow for extra loading space. The rear seats could also be folded flat resulting in a van type rear layout. The specifications of the car sadly are quite murky with obviously it being a concept at the time, this car was actually slated to be in production by 2004. So going on that and going on MG Rover's current assets at the time, I could speculate that it would probably have the same running gear as a Rover 75 or the newly currently in development G-Series inline four diesel engine being developed by Powertrain and one of MG Rover's sister companies. So my most likely specifications would be the um, five-speed um, manual or automatic out the 75 front-wheel drive um, with a simpler um, rear um, arm and strut and suspension arrangement with possibly a KV6, a 1.8 turbo. I can't imagine them putting the naturally aspirated 1.8 in there. But yeah, that's how I would probably... Um, probably imagine it with the sheer tonnage the rover 75 i believe is about two tons so that um this car with all of its all of its amazing features of it being to able to literally transform i can imagine it having those sorts of specifications one of the big things about this car that you probably noticed as soon as you turn this video on was the styling 
This is a departure from the chrome and retro looks originally introduced with the Rover 600, carried through to the Rover 800, to the 25, 45 and 75 and beyond. This was supposed to mark a new future direction for Rover and its styling with a swooping bonnet and a complementing grille sharing the same shape, really bringing that front together. And of course, you've got that real slab sided um, sides with that lovely angle going down each side as well. And that very forward thinking rear light layout, um, almost a Lexus style light, but a bit more classy. Not the type that you would find on a um, Vauxhall Corsa at the time. Of course, they even had to aid in this amazing um, futuristic thing. At the time was a, quote, virtual reality demonstration which was produced, which was essentially, um, being 2002, looked like a PlayStation 2 game. So it just showed the car and obviously flashed its lights and all that weird stuff. Quite cheesy now, but looking back at it, um, most of us probably would have wet ourselves at the idea of a um, 3D car with opening doors, which really shows how far we've come in terms of technology. That sounds fantastic, you may say, but sadly, it was not meant to be. The car ended up exactly how it started, as a clay model and a wonderful sketch in the Peter Stevens design team's repertoire of amazing designs. Due to have gone into mass production by 2004, Sadly, due to the state of MG Rover's books, this was never realised and this radical concept was shelved. However, due to this sad and unfortunate state that MG Rover was in at the time, they then went back to their old ways of platform sharing. Approaching Proton in 2004, um, reported by Autocar that they were, in the work, they were in talks to produce a TCV-style 45 um, class car with a reworked version of Proton's Gen 2 hatchback by 2006. Of course, replacing the 45, and then with hopes to use one of the other many cars in the Proton range to replace the 25, producing sort of a Protonized, Roverized hybrid, as you can see here. Of course, MG Rover were not done pimping their assets yet, and they offered Proton the license, supposedly, to produce the Protonized Rover 75. And no, I am, I am not joking about that, by the way. And if you'd like to see me make a video on the um, failed negotiations and deals of MG Rover, um, analysing those, including the China fiasco, let me know in the comments. You may ask, what of the cars? The two that attended the motor show, the blue one and the sort of silver looking one. Well, one of those was last seen in the late 2010s at Longbridge. The silver one, though, it kind of disappeared. These two, of course, were clay models and were not functioning cars in any way, sadly. They were, in essence, and by the sum of their parts, concepts and demonstrators for the future of MG Rover, shown to partners, customers and investors, such as China Brilliance, who went on to have a very limited partnership with MG Rover, producing... A repatched Rover 75, the Brilliance B8, which um, the grill looks pretty abominable. So, yes, um, I guess that was a um, result. Um, very good partnership. Jokes aside, the TCV and the interest it generated, whether in a small or large way, contributed to the limited survival of the company and its workforce, enabled them to put food on the table, and enabled the company to continue functioning and producing the cars that we absolutely love and absolutely hate to this day. This, if it had gone into manufacture, would have been one of the most forward-thinking cars of its generation, but sadly, that was not meant to be. The cars themselves have wasted away and were practically disintegrating due to the condition of the clay by the time they were removed from Longbridge, and yet another example of British motoring heritage was lost to time. This, of course, is the part where I give you my opinion. Now, the Rover TCV, to me, is a fantastic looking car. I love the grille. I love everything about this car, minus the rear um, and the bit where it demonstrates the kid playing with Legos in the back. I guess that's to show it fits the many seasons of life that you go through. Um, but I just think it's a fantastic car and slightly reminds me of the A4 Allroad 
Now, to me, of course, you could come up with several theories. That's right, we're in the Rover conspiracy theory section. For me, I kind of think that this, it's obviously this is part of the RDX 60 program. This and the four-wheel drive um, MGZTT that we mentioned in the last video, annotation above, by the way, for the lost prototypes and concepts from um, MG Rover. Um, I believe that those two could have potentially been linked. Um, that had Land Rover um, Freelander running gear. This car could have potentially had Land Rover Freelander running gear, and that would have made it such an easy thing to... Well, I say easy. It would have been a easier thing to develop, and I just think, you know, those two things could have been could have been linked together. Now, would this have saved this, um, this automotive giant? No, because sadly, and you'll probably hear this a lot, and oh uh, well, you'll probably hear this not as frequently, um, as it should be mentioned. The British public shot themselves in the foot. Um, and we didn't buy, we moaned about nothing being made here anymore, didn't make, <laughs> didn't buy the thing that was made here, and then it went away, and then we moaned about why we don't have it anymore, which is a common theme that always happens. But, of course, if you look at the offering, offerings at the time, um, and the way the motoring press was covering Rover at the time, it was a recipe for just obliteration. And I think... The sad part of it is that is MG Rover, Austin Rover, British Leyland, unfortunately became the essentially the British industry punching bag in the car industry over those years because of obviously several failings in the past. Now, you know, people don't tend to mention, um, you know, I can remember there's some Toyotas that have the, um, you know, would accelerate uncontrolled into frigging walls in America People don't tend to mention that sort of stuff when they talk about those companies because their press team is so good at hiding it and so good at, you know, controlling the narrative. However, with MG Rover, I don't believe they had that sort of expertise or wherewithal in-house. So we can debate that, though, until the cars, uh, until, until the cars come home, until the cows come home. Sadly, though, the Rover TCV did not, gain enough interest to sustain the brand from its unfortunate um position at the time in my head though if they'd have just released it a little bit earlier a little bit later perhaps in 2004 when the um you know the whole um oh it's gonna it's going down it's going down started then that probably would have saved them a bit. But I understand, obviously, why it was developed at the time. It was the whole brave new world scenario. Rovers coming into the twenty, the um, new millennium with a new, you know, a new way of looking at things, a new way forward. But you've got to think, the Rover 75 had only been on the market a few years at the time. So I think if they'd have just thought about releasing that maybe in 2003, perhaps moving it on a year, that probably would have made thing, things a bit bit more palatable but at the end of the day all you can really you know as demonstrated with the rover space station top gear clip there's not much you could have done with that unfortunately and the the fact of the matter is is you know there's only so many times you can you can kick something while it's down before it ends up rolling over and dying and unfortunately that was the case so i hope you enjoyed this video this car has been a elusive little bugger to co cover but gosh damn it's been interesting if there's anything else you guys want me to cover, let me know in the comments. Normal projects and stuff will resume soon, so don't worry. I'm not turning into a talking talking channel now. This will be in conjunction with that. Unfortunately, I'm so busy at the minute, I literally never have time to do anything. But that will um, change because I've got some time off, thank God. So, hope you're all keeping well. Thank you for watching. Keep watching and remember to subscribe for more of this and more of the other stuff. Because I'll see you soon.